So these are the kinds of questions. Let's look at each of the three kinds of questions that are going to show up on the assignment. So one of them, the first group of problems just looks like this. You're supposed to complete the square for those first two terms by choosing the right value of C. You can do it in your head. What's it going to be? Yeah, yeah, think for a second, probably. But what's our recipe? Now we'll think back. What do you do? B over 2 squared, right? So what's half of negative 10 thirds? Negative 5 thirds. Squared is 25 ninths. There you go. Okay, and so once again, the way we get there is B over 2 equals negative 5 thirds, B over 2 squared equals 25 ninths, and so that's what goes there, 25 ninths. Okay? Question? What if it's like a number that's not divisible by 2? This one's not divisible by 2. Yes. Right? I mean, we have 10 thirds is not divisible by 2. We got 5 thirds, see what I'm saying? So, like, what if it's 7 or something, right? Yeah. So, what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, half of 7 is 7 halves. 7 and a half squared would be 49 fourths. You, I mean, we got a fraction this time also. Anytime you get a fraction and you square the fraction, you're just going to square top and bottom. Okay? So, here's an example of one like that. Now, you got to read this one. So, this is the second group of problems. And this one's not just asking for C. You got to read this one carefully. So you've got to find the value of C that makes it a perfect square trinomial, but then it wants you to factor it. So you're going to write it as, you're going to find C, and once you find C, you're going to write this as something squared. So what's the something? X plus 23 halves. That's it, right? It's just going to be X plus half of B quantity squared. Every time. Yes, sir? So when you like divide that number by two, you want to keep it in like a fraction, not a decimal? Yeah, you want, don't, don't make it a decimal. Yeah, leave it a fraction. How come we generally do that? In some cases, decimals are fine. This one would be fine, wouldn't it? Because it's a terminating decimal. But a lot of times, decimals end up not being terminating. And then a decimal is just an approximation. It's not an exact answer. Fractions are always exact. Okay, so now let's get down to the nitty gritty. The last group of problems is stuff like this. So here are the ones where they want you to convert the quadratic function to vertex form, right? So this is where we have to complete the square. So let's, everybody click and close, and let's just walk through these steps with me a couple times just to make sure we kind of cement these in your brain, and then you got them, and I'm good with you guys having the rest of the day and really the rest of the week just to prepare for the test and get your stuff done. That's how we use into break. Okay, so what's our first step? What is it, Shay? Y equals. Okay, it's a kind of an easy step, right? First step is we're going to set y equal to everything, so we have a place to store stuff on the left, right? To put all our garbage while we're doing the algebra. So y equals negative two x squared minus ten x minus twenty two. Okay, good. Step two. Okay, and, and why are we doing that? What is step two? We're trying to get it in what form on the right side? X squared plus BX. Good. So step two is we want to put this into the form on the right side. We want to get something of the form X squared plus BX. So we got some steps to do. First step is we're going to add 22, right? Okay. Uh, so we end up with y plus 22 equals negative 2x squared minus 10x. Now what? Divide by negative 2. If I divide everything through by negative 2, I'm going to get on the left side, y plus 22 divided by negative 2 equals what? x squared plus 5x. Everybody agree? Okay, good. Right? We're there. So we got it where we needed to go. Now we're going to go ahead and actually finish the job and complete the square. So step three, what do we do? Yeah, 
Okay, so B over 2 would be 5 halves, right? Mm -hmm. So let, we'll write that down. So B over 2 is 5 halves. That's important. So what's the number we're going to add to both sides? Okay, 5 halves squared, right? Good. So we're going to add 5 halves squared. Well, what is 5 halves squared? 25 fourths. Good. And what do we get on the other side, right? So we added that to both sides, uh, and we're on, what are we on, step three? Step three? So step four is really, I mean, that, that's step three. Step four, let me put step three up here. Step four is a pretty easy step, right? Step four is we're just going to factor. And we already know the answer. In fact, we could have written step four down before step three. We're going to factor the right side. What are you going to get on the right side? You could have told me before you ever even put that number there. X plus five halves is what you're going to get. You know that's the perfect square before you even figure out what number you add to both sides. You already know that's what your perfect square is going to be. It's determined by B, isn't it? Right? Okay, but we needed to know what number to add to both sides because that's all the junk that's stored on the left side that we got to get rid of now. We have to do the same thing to both sides, right? Otherwise, if all we wanted to know was that part, we could have just skipped this step completely. But we're trying to solve for Y, aren't we? Right. So now on the other side, what have we got? So we're going to have to undo a whole bunch of stuff. Got to give myself a little more room here. So over here we've got 25 fourths plus y plus 22 minus 2. All right, so what are the, I mean, i got to get that Y by itself. So what's the order of, of events here? I'm really just undoing everything in reverse order that I did in steps two and three, right? So subtract the 25 fourths. Good. So step number, like, 4A, first step is we get Y plus 22 over negative 2 equals my perfect square minus... 25 fourths. Okay, now what? Distribute a negative 2 through both sides. Good. Okay, so so what's that going to give me on the right side then? I'm going to get negative 2 times my perfect square. That's coming along nicely, right? That's my a times x minus h squared. So all I'm really trying to do is find K now, right? just to figure out what is K going to end up being when all the dust settles. If I distribute a negative 2 through here, I'm going to get positive what? Positive 50 over 4, which reduces to 25 halves. And I could have just 2 over 4 reduces to 1 over 2. Negative times the negative is positive. And then the very last step, subtract 22. Good. So we'll subtract 22 and get y by itself. And I'm going to get negative 2 times x plus 5 halves squared plus whatever that is. We'll think about that. 25 halves minus 44 halves, right? It's so what is that? Negative 19? Yes. Right, if I just turn that into a 44 halves, negative 44 halves. There it is. So our final answer is just, that's our function in vertex form. Okay. So we, we could go another route with this. You could have actually done this problem before I even showed you how to complete the square if you were tricky. What could you have done? Well, you know what A is, don't you? What's A? Negative 2, right? Well, we, that's what we got. We know A is negative 2. 
how could I have found h? Because really, vertex form is just, this is just in vertex form, right? When I complete the square. Do I see that? So h is negative 5 halves. Oh, hang on. Hello? Yeah, hey, Kathy. OK, so I, if you just. Here we go. So, so what, what would my trick have been? I mean, we could have done this. You could have done this last week. Really, you could have. Ah, OK, good. I could have found h because I know if I went up to the very beginning here, I would have had a equals negative 2, h equals negative 10. K equals negative 22, right? Or sorry, I mean not H, A, A B, and C, not A, H, and K. Oh, darn. Let's fix that. A. I'm trying to find H and K. So A, B, and C. And then what's the little trick I could have had? H equals negative B over 2A. So that would have given us, uh, what's that? So it would have given us positive 10 over negative 4, so negative 5 halves. Well, that's what we got. What do you know? H is negative 5 halves. How about that, right? And if I wanted to find K, how do I find K? Plug it in. Good. So if that's F of X, it would just be F of H, right? OK, that would be kind of a hard thing to do, though, right? Plug in that. I mean, which one's easier? I would say the way we did it is by a smidge is a little bit easier, a little bit shorter. Okay, because you've got to plug in something like negative 5 halves and square it and multiply it by 10 and combine all that stuff and add a bunch of fractions up. I know this way, if I were doing it, I would complete the square. To me, that, like, if I was looking at the same, okay, I'm going to do this the easiest way, I would complete the square. You may not be there quite yet because you haven't done it very much, but once you do it a few times, it's not that big of a deal. It's really not. Okay? Got it? Do you, I'll leave it up to you. Do you want to do yes. this one? Yes. Okay. All right, let's do this one too. So let's go through our steps again. So step one, set it equal to y, right? So we get y equals one fifth x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now what? Subtract 5. Now what? Okay, divide by 1 fifth, which is even easier to do by Multiplying by five. So let's let's multiply each side of the equation, meaning I'm going to distribute a five through. Okay, which is going to give me if I distribute, I'm going to get five y minus twenty five equals. Okay, and then. What number am I going to add? What am I going to get? Let's skip a step. I want you to tell me, what am I going to get on this side? X plus 10 squared, right? I already know I'm going to get that. Right, right. OK, but to get there, here's the thing, though. To get there, I've got to have that intermediate step, right? To get there, I've got to add to both sides what? B over 2 squared. So I've got to add 10 squared to both sides, right? And now that whole thing is going to factor to that, isn't it? I created a perfect squared trinomial that factors correctly. And think about it. Pick the magic numbers that multiply to 100 and add to 20, 10, and 10, right? On the other side, if we combine like terms, we just get 5y plus 75. Yeah. So now it's easy, just two steps to get the y by itself. What do we do? Subtract 75. So I get 5y equals the quantity x plus 10 squared minus 75. And then 
divide by 5. So if I divide by 5, I get 1 fifth. Good. Because I want to write it in vertex form, right? So we're going to get y equals 1 fifth times the quantity x plus 10 squared minus 15. There it is. It's pretty fast, isn't it? Thank you. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.